we have the first of our Worldcon seated bids sitting up here at the front. So I will kick off now at the moment um, with Dublin Worldcon 2019. Hello, how are you all? My name is James Bacon. I'm the chair of Dublin 2019. It's a great pleasure to be here. Presenting with, with me this evening are Marguerite Smith, Nicholas White, Aaron Underwood, and Esther McConnell Stewart is ably assisting. This is our last Spanish Inquisition. Yeah. Absolutely. And as you can see, there is great excitement at that prospect. <laughs> We went to Worldcon 76 in San Jose and had an amazingly exciting time. We were all very proud to hear James read out the letter from the President of Ireland, Michael D. Higgins, welcoming fans to Dublin. We also took in several hundred memberships during the month of August. Our guests of honor include Diane Duane, Ginger Buchanan, Ian MacDonald, Steve Jackson, Bill and Mary Burns, and Dame Jocelyn Bell Burnell. Some of them you might have heard of in the news recently. Uh, Dr. Bell Burnell won the special breakthrough prize in fundamental physics and then immediately donated the entire $3 million prize fund to help underrepresented students, including women, ethnic minorities, and refugees become physics researchers. Bill Burns won this year's Fan Activity Achievement Award at Corflu 35 for best fan website for efanzines.com. Slightly less good news. The Irish government, unfortunately, has in increased the value added tax on hotel stays from 9% to 13.5%. So the prices we show here reflect that rate, as do those listed in the questionnaire, which I think is available to everybody. Hotel bookings will open for our members on the 9th of January at 2 p.m. Dublin time, which is 6 a.m. here. People with access requirements will be able to book from Wednesday the 5th, which is, say, next Wednesday, four days from now, uh, 5th of December, but we do need to hear from those with access requirements in advance. And our staff will be able to book from the 12th of December in 11 days' time. Please do go ahead and book your accommodation when and how you want. Um, we know that some people are getting apartments, getting members' deals from the hotel chains they may be associated with. Book away. We encourage you to book and to get the best deal that you can that suits you. We have sold over 700 First World Con memberships. In, to in total, we have 3,706 full attending memberships sold. We also have some 100 installment plans going, and we are doing really well. Program sent out our survey on the 25th of November to over 750 people and expect more to be requested. We do require that people fill in the participant query form to be considered for programming due to GDPR, the European Union's data privacy laws. We would like to take this opportunity to announce an addition to our featured artists. Joining Maeve Clancy and Jim Fitzpatrick will be Afua Richardson. Afua is an artist who has worked for both Marvel and DC Comics. She's perhaps best known for her work on the Black Panther comics, which heavily influenced the look and feel of this year's film. Her most recent work is this alternate cover for Shuri No. 2, written by Nnedi Okorafor and published by Marvel last week. Maeve Clancy is an artist who works in installations, paper engineering, set design, comics, and illustration. This is one of her pieces, and it demonstrates our venue, the Convention Center Dublin. And Jim Fitzpatrick is, of course, well known for his Celtic and historical work, also for the, uh, the great Irish band of the 70s and 80s, Thin Lizzy. He did, he did many of their album covers, but I guess most people here are too young to remember them. Um, um, he's well known also for his Captain America murals in Dublin and most particularly for his portrait of Che Guevara from 1968. The problem of success is that many people want to come to Dublin and we are therefore um, in the interesting position of wanting to expand our activities. We've 
uh, instituted a new fringe division, which is run by Warren McHugh as division head. And we already have plans afoot with the Irish Film Institute, the Trinity College Dublin Science Gallery, the Mansion House, which is the official residence of Dublin's Lord Mayor, and the Museum of Literature Ireland, which you may not have heard of because it hasn't actually opened yet. <laughs> Along, <laughs> along these same lines, we will, we will be expanding the program space beyond the CCD. We'll be holding the business meeting at the Gibson Hotel, and there are other exciting facilities available in the vicinity known as the Point Square. We, active, we are actively considering an extra 1,000 program seats and 2,000 square meters of potential exhibit space in this area. As you can see, the Point Square is 850 meters, only a 12 minute walk, or a short Lewis trolley ride from the CCD. We mention this since we are looking to find more space, and this opens some exciting opportunities for Dublin 2019. Here's some footage of one of the potential exhibit spaces which, use, which is used annually for the Christmas fair. That's not the Christmas fair. Here we go. We're the Club and Flea, which is a monthly market, uh, but we put on a Christmas market every year, and we're so excited because we actually get to invite crafts and designers from around Ireland, so it's a real mix of the monthly flea, collectibles, vintage, retro, and then the uh, handmade craft and contemporary design from around the country. Trading at the Dublin Flea Christmas Market. As you can see, we are investigating whether we can make this work and looking to expand our footprint considerably to accommodate fans. It is now five years since our first Finnish Inquisition. And our first presentation seems not so long ago and also a long time ago. But we have really enjoyed the challenges that you have presented to us. And it's been great fun getting here. We now have 36 weeks and four days to go 2019. Not that any of us are counting. But I would definitely like to say from all of us, from the Dublin 2019 team, a thank you for your support to this stage and you know, we are very grateful and thankful to be here. Thank you indeed. Okay, so just to remind people, if you stick your hands up for one of the runners, if you have any questions for the Dublin Worldcon, um, I have a couple, just basically to tie things over. Um, you're running additional sites um, away from the convention centre and I basically a 12 minute walk, I'm just sort of asking the question for, for people um, with disabilities, people um, who will be using scooters, those sorts of things. How frequently does the trolley run? What's the handicap access for that like? Um, and what is the time for, essentially, is the 12 minute walk that you're quoting for able to people who can do it quickly or is it that just a more generic stroll? Okay, so it's the red line on the Lewis and it starts at 6, 16 a.m. and it ends at 23.46 p.m. Those are the current times. It starts off with a frequency of 10 minutes and it gathers pace and goes very quickly to every five minutes and during the, the peak period of the day, which I believe is from 11.23 to uh, 7, no, it must be 8.45, uh, is every three minutes. Uh, these aren't like London buses, they do run on time. <laughs> so I think this one would be for James. So, sorry, now we didn't address the question which was about the accessibility of the Lewis. The Lewis is a modern trolley system. It's only been instituted in the last few years. They are very accessible, you can ride straight on, and there's actually lots of space for uh, Mobis and so forth on board. So that's not a problem either. So a question from the audience. What kind of Worldcon is Dublin 2019?
awesome con. <laughs> no, like we're, we're going to have a big celebration in Dublin. We want to bring so many fans to Dublin and we're succeeding with that. So we want to build on that success and we want to make sure that we give you a really proper welcome. Um, and you know, we're trying to be thoughtful right now about how many people want to come. So we want it to be um, comfortable for everyone. And we also want to be able to accommodate as many fans and as many new fans as possible. Like for us to have 700 fans who've never been to a world Cup before, when we when you know is quite a serious achievement, and we want to continue that growth. Another question from the audience, and I'm assuming that it's part of the reason you've got Mr. White up there, um, would be what what's the latest on Brexit? Um, what do you believe is likely to be the impact? And and. What do you see as a worst case scenario for people going from the Dublin Worldcon to a Belfast Eurocon? Well, it's, it's an entirely fair question. Uh, there will be no problem with movement of people between Belfast and Dublin. My hands are on. Okay, is it not? Is that clear now? Suck it. Suck it and see. Very good. Thank you. There will be no problem with people moving between the Republic of Ireland and the UK, and that includes moving between Dublin and Belfast. The one thing that everybody's been very clear about is the movement of people under what's known as the common travel area arrangements that have been in place since Ireland became independent in 1922, but that will continue no matter what the other bizarre elements that were under discussion of Brexit will be. There will be difficulty in movement of industrial levels of goods, Frankly, if that's what you're coming to Ireland for next summer, I would be surprised if Worldcon is that high on your agenda, but you're very welcome to try it. Um, obviously, I continue to monitor the, uh, the situation. You're very welcome to subscribe to my work bulletin called abcobrexitbytes.eu, which will be out again early next week. It's a monthly bulletin. I'm happy to talk to you later. Thank you very much. <laughs> Um, who's running your masquerade, if you're having one? Um, I would like to call Helen Montgomery, who's the division head for events, to the stage for a moment, please. You have 46 seconds. <laughs> I am very excited to announce that as of today, we officially have Kevin Roche running our masquerade. In Dublin. <laughs> to translate the presentations into American English. <laughs> no. <laughs> Finland brought in a lot of new fans. Um, London had 10,000. How many people are you planning to... <laughs> Like, that's a really, really good question. London had 10,000. How many people are you expecting, and what plans do you have if you reach capacity? Uh, London didn't have 10,000. They had about 8,000 people on site at any one time. But um, we don't expect at this stage, based on our investigations of expansion space as discussed, um, to hit capacity. Um, but we're going to continue to work in that direction. Um, at the moment, we would expect really near the top end. And of course, it's purely speculative that we could have five and a half thousand, six thousand people, but it's, you know, at this stage, we have to be careful with any figure. It's, it's never accurate until it's finished. I'd like to thank Dublin. If you have any further questions, um, I'm sure that James will be around and his committee will be more than happy to help you with that. <laughs>